welcome to Empowerment Hour. No need to silence your device. Your worship experience is just moments away.
Hallelujah. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, yes. I will rejoice and be glad in this. Let us stand for the call to worship. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I will bless the Lord yes, yes. at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Yes. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. And the homage shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord. together. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated for the invocation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let there be praise. God, we thank you. Glory, glory. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah, sweet spirit in this place. God, we praise you. Loving Father, we are so thankful that you've allowed us to come together once again yes, yes. to worship your name and give you praise. For you are the good God, and you're worthy of all praises. Yes. Father, we pray that you will bless this worship experience in the name of Jesus. Name of Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Yes. Hallelujah. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the last Sunday in black history. I hope that you, if you don't know our hymn, it's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. We've been told that this is a black anthem, so for those, if you don't know all the words, that's okay. But will you continue in our worship and stand for hymn 653? Lift every voice and sing. Hallelujah. Hymn 653. Lift every voice and sing. Till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the heart.
as we affirm our faith the use of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty the maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary suffered under the Pontius Pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he arose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sit upon the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Again, good morning to all of you. It is prayer time. There's a lot of things that are going on in our world. Some are, so many things, news every day, people dying and being killed, and there's wars, and we need to pray. We are commissioned to pray. The Bible said, me and I always pray and not faint. So this time as we prepare our hearts to pray, Perhaps that you have come and you have a special request for prayer that you want God to do. This is the time. Believe God that God can do what no one else can do. God can do what may seem impossible for you to do. God is able. So during this prayer, if you would like to come to the altar or you just want to remain seated, that's fine as well. If you want to lift your hands and unspoken requests, but just to nod and say, God, I need prayer. I need you to do something for me this morning. We're going to believe God. God been good to us and kept us and brought us through this week. There's been some struggles for some. And there are those even this morning that are grieving. Loved ones have passed. May have been with them on yesterday or last week. But God has called them home. Let's pray. Let's pray. God is able. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praying for grandkids and children. Come to. Yes, yes. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brought up through surgery. Reverend Jackson wants prayer for his sister and others, and thank you, God, for Reverend Steely Jackson. Hallelujah. so thankful that you have blessed us to see this another day. God, you've been so good to us. You woke us up and we know that it wasn't the alarm clocks, God, but it was your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another day. God, we thank you for keeping us from danger seen and unseen. God, thank you. Oh, God, we thank you, God. God, we thank you for keeping us in your care, God. 
Thank you, Lord. For God, we acknowledge the fact that we haven't did everything you've told us to do. For many times, God, you told us to do one thing and we did contrary, God. God, forgive us. Forgive us, God. And God, I pray that you would strengthen us today, God. That we would do what you would help us to do, God. Lord, we know that it's not about us, but it's all about you. And God, we are lifting up this morning, God, our communities, God. There's so much pain in the communities, God. Somebody's burning this morning, Father. But God, we know that you're able to lift burdens this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, you have all power, God. I pray that you would touch right now in the name of Jesus. And God, remember our nation, God. A lot is going on. There's a lot of turmoil, God, but we know, God, that you're yet in control, God. And God, we won't walk by what we see, but God, we are walking by faith in you, God. God, we're going to trust in you, God. And God, when we see, God, that we don't know about tomorrow, God, help us to remember that you hold tomorrow. God, you know all about it. All things will work together for our good. Even when it don't feel good, God, we thank you. Hallelujah, God, that you're working it out for our good. Thank you, God. God, I lift up right now, Father. God, those who are grieving this morning, Lord. Oh, God. I pray that you would touch right now, Father. I pray that you would comfort them this morning, God. You know all about it, God. I pray that you would give them comfort during this time, God. It may seem difficult, God, but help them to look to you, Father, for the comfort, God, in the name of Jesus. God, there are those around the altar, Father. Those, God, that may be sitting in the pews, the chairs, God. You know all about it, God. And God, if they're crying out to you, Father, I pray that you would touch right now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, if they're putting it on the altar, God, I pray that you would help them, Father. Work it out, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we're lifting up our children to you, God, our youth, God, our young adults. We're lifting them up to you, God. God, we pray that you will bless and protect them, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy today, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, God, we thank you, God. And God, we pray, God, that you will bless this worship experience, God. Oh, God, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, God. It belongs to you, God. It's not about us, but it's all about you, Father. So we praise you, God. Oh, God, we glorify your name, God. And God, we pray right now for our pastor, God, Dr. Curl and Dewberry, Lord. God, we thank you for the word, God. We believe there is a word from you, God. And God, we pray that you anoint her afresh, God, in the name of Jesus. God, that you will speak to her and through her in the name of Jesus. And as we hear your word, God, help us to receive your word, God. Help us to do, God, what your word is saying for each of us, God, individually, God, in the name of Jesus. And let us not just keep the word to ourselves, but let us share with others, God. I'm praying right now for those who do not know you as that personal Savior, Father. I'm praying, God, that you will save, God, to the utmost, save souls, God, in the name of Jesus. Somebody don't know there's a Savior that loves them right where they are, Father. I pray, save them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And God, help us, God, to share the good, the gospel of, the, of Christ, God. The good news, help us to share, God. Help us to be about kingdom work, God. We know one day you're coming back, God. And God, help us to do what you called us to do, God. God, we love you this morning. We glorify you. We lift you up, God. Oh, God, we thank you for what you're going to do, God. Thank you for our faith, what you're doing even now. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For we ask all this in Jesus' precious name. Glory. Amen. Thank you, God. Glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God.
See, there ought to be a praise break right there. God is my all in all. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. God is. Yeah, God is. God is. God is. He's the same. <laughs> Whoa! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for being a constant friend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For being a company keeper. Thank you, Lord. For being a healer. Thank you, Lord. For being a burden bearer. Thank you, Lord. For being a heavy load sharer. Thank you, Lord, for being a bridge over troubled waters. Thank you, Lord, for being a mind regulator. Thank you, God. Thank you for being a keeper. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being a savior. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He is my all and all. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Certainly, we bless the Lord today. For he is God. And above him, there is no other. He's God all by himself. Amen. And I love the Lord. Amen. We're grateful to the Lord for... Your presence here today, my heart rejoices. Amen. We're thankful to have with us this morning the Reverend Stanley J. Jackson. Amen. Who is also a former presiding elder of this district. Amen. We thank and praise God for his presence and for his son being here today, amen. Hallelujah, we bless the Lord. We, you know, I was looking out over the congregation, and as I was looking, now I, I wasn't counting, but I'm like, the men almost outweigh, outnumber the women today. <laughs> See, maybe some of y'all missed that. Because in today's time, but we thankful for your presence today. Amen. In this place and those that are joining us online via Facebook, YouTube, and our website, we thank and praise God for you joining us for Empowerment Hour with St. Stephen's. Amen. Can you just bless the Lord with me for this choir? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for lending your voices. Ah, God, to bless the Lord in music ministry. Thank you, God. Ah, we thank you. We thank you. This morning, this morning, will you turn in your Bibles or Pull up on your electronic devices. In the New Testament, the book of Romans. Romans, the fourth chapter. Amen. Romans, the fourth chapter. 
And I want to begin reading in your hearing at verse 13. From the New International Version. Romans chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. The New International Version. It was not through the law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who depend on the law are heirs, faith means nothing and the promise is worthless because the law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace and may be guaranteed to all Abraham's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all, as it is written. I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Against all hope. Abraham, in hope, believed, and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words, it was credited to him, were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, the necessity of faith. The necessity of faith. Let us pray. Now, Lord, it's me again, standing in the need of prayer, standing in the need, Lord, of your blessing, standing in the need, God, that you might use me, Lord, for your glory. For God, I pray that Carolyn would decrease and your Holy Spirit increase in this place. Please, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. For you, God, are my strength. You are my redeemer. Have your way in this place. Bless, Lord, our coming in and our going out. We thank you, God, in advance for what you're going to do. God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you, God, in advance for, hallelujah, God, for what you're going to do in this place and in us. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. The necessity of faith. My brothers and sisters, it's not new news, but we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith is necessary in order to please God. And during this Lenten season, this Lent season, the elder has chosen the theme for the district, Faith Makes the Difference. Our Sunday school lesson has been based on faith. Amen. We've been studying and talking about faith and coming into the knowledge of what faith really is. Faith is a necessity. You must have faith. We will all face some difficult times in our lives. I don't care how saved you are. We all. It doesn't matter if you reverend. If you're just missionary. Usher, we all are going to face some difficult times in our lives on this Christian journey. Christians are not exempt from having to face or to deal with trying times, with painful times, dark times, disappointing times. Times of discouragement, times of insecurity, times of loss and grief, times of loneliness and isolation. But these times are to propel you and me, to propel us, to activate our faith. When these times come, it ought to com propel you and even compel you to activate your faith. Faith is necessary to make it through such times in our lives. My brothers and sisters, we must believe God. In our text, Looking at verse 18, it begins by saying, against all hope. Then it says, Abraham in hope. Against all hope. Abraham in hope. Now, now what does this mean? What does this really mean? You see, Abraham believed God beyond all human possibilities and impossibilities. It was not humanly possible, according to man, that a hundred-year-old man and a ninety-year-old woman would conceive and bring forth a child. <laughs> As a matter of fact, they were considered as dead. Yeah. But yet Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And I know this sounds like an impossible thing to happen. A 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman conceiving at that age. I 
Matthew 19 and 26 tells us, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This is the way Luke puts it. Luke chapter 18, verse 27, he said, Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Now, let me let, me let you know now that these words from Matthew 19 and Luke 18, these words were spoken by Jesus at the time a man and presumably rich man asked him the question teacher what good thing must I do to get eternal life but you see asking this question of Jesus. He was instructed to go and sell all that he had and give to the poor. Those of you that, that are familiar with this particular story, uh, it, it, he leaves <laughs> sorrowfully. Go and sell all that you have. So he went away <laughs> disheartened. But, but, but it went on to say that in that discourse, Jesus went on to say to him and ultimately to us today, it is easier for a camel to make it through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into the kingdom of God. This is what Jesus was saying to him. A camel going through the eye of a needle? Everybody know what a camel looks like, right? And that big hump. And I don't know about you, I have trouble now with my eyes trying to thread a little needle. But it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into the kingdom of God. But listen, it said Abraham, back to Romans chapter 4, said Abraham in hope against all hope. When all hope as a human possibility failed... Abraham placed his hope in God. You see, faith is necessary to please God. Faith is a necessity. A necessity. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed God even though his body was old and beyond <laughs> and Sarah's beyond childbearing. But he believed God. And when we look at this text, Paul in this text in this particular chapter, as a matter of fact, the entire chapter, Paul uses the word credit or credited nine times in these verses. Nine times. Credited. It said Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. You see, credited, credited, it means in the sense of an account or reckoning. He was credited. It means regard or to take into account. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. It was taken into account as righteousness. Look at verse 22. It says to us, this is why 
It was credited to him as righteousness. Verse 23, the words it was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us, to whom God credited, or to whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Amen. It was credited to Abraham as righteousness, but not just for him. <laughs> See, we can learn from this. Faith is necessary. For without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Abraham exemplified true faith. Yeah, yeah. Why do I say that? Because we did just, he, he didn't just talk about it. But Abraham acted upon his faith, his belief in what God had said. Abraham exemplified true faith, complete confidence in God's promise. He had complete confidence in God's promise. Verse 20 says, yet he did not waver. Complete confidence. He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. <laughs> Verse 21, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. I wonder this morning, do you believe God's promise? Do you believe God's promises? Amen. Do you believe God's word? Think about it. Do you believe or truly believe God can do whatever God wants to do? Do you believe that God can do the impossible? Against all odds, against all hope, do you believe? When your back is against the wall, do you believe that God can? When your body is racking with pain, do you believe God can heal your body? Ah, when your money is funny, do you believe God can? Hallelujah, I wonder this morning when your bills are piling up, do you believe God can and God will? Hallelujah, when your children are acting up, do you really believe that God can? Do you have faith? A faith that can be credited to your righteousness. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that yes, faith is a necessity. Yeah, it's necessary to have faith in order to obtain God's promise. In order to obtain God's promise, you must have faith. Amen. You've got to believe that God will do just what he said he would do. Faith is a necessity. Amen. In order to ab abide in God's promise or his purpose, to abide in God's purpose, you must have faith. Amen. Because there's often times you're going to have to go when you can't even see where you're going. Amen. I need you to understand when God spoke to Abram and told him to leave his family. He didn't know where he was going, but he went on anyway. In order for us to abide in God's purpose, you must have faith. Amen. Faith is necessary. Amen. In order to operate in God's power. Amen. I need you to know that Abraham believed God. 
amen, and he believed that it was God who had the power to do great and marvelous things. He believed what God said, that he would bring forth a child by Sarah. Amen. He believed that God had the power to do it. Again, in verse 21, it says, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. And because God had the power, Abraham was given power huh, to stand on God's word. Huh? Can I get a witness here? The word says, huh? Paul said, it was accredited, his faith, Abraham's faith, was accredited to him as righteousness. And I come to ask you this morning, what is credited to your faith? Can your faith move so that it'll be accredited to righteousness? I know we're in this month of black history, the last Sunday. So yes, my brothers and sisters, this being Black History Month, let's give credit to some of those who have made their mark in history. We don't want to forget about our people. Some who have, against all hope, <laughs> they knew the necessity of faith. Faith in the God of all possibilities. They had faith in the God of all possibilities. And when people said it could not be done, but yet they did it. Can I get a witness here? I'm talking about folk like Carter G. Woodson. Carter G. Woodson founded the association for the study of Negro life and history. In 1915, it was in 1926, Woodson started Negro History Week, which would become Black History Month. <laughs> yeah, in 1976, against all hope, against all possibilities. Amen. But yet he stepped out on faith. What about Frederick Douglass? Frederick Douglass Patterson served as president of Tuskegee Normal and Industrial for a quarter century. He's most famous for establishing the United Negro College Fund in 1944, and in recognition of his accomplishments, President Reagan awarded Patterson the Presidential Medal of Freedom, America's highest civilian honor against all hope, against all odds, but because they had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is accredited to them. Not only them, but what about civic leaders? Civic leaders, such as Ch Shirley Chisholm. Anybody remember Shirley Chisholm? <laughs> Shirley Chisholm became the first African-American woman elected to Congress in 1968. She served in the House of Representatives from 1969 to 1983. During her time in Congress, Chisholm focused on inner city issues, vocally opposed the draft, and promoted an increased focus on education, health care, and other social services. And in 1972, she made a bid for Democrats, the Democratic Party's nomination for president. <laughs> yes, she did. She was telling supporters 
she ran and quote, to demonstrate the sheer will and refusal to accept the status quo, end quote. Shirley, C. Shirley Chisholm was a bad woman. <laughs> yeah, and I mean bad in a good way. Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall gained prominence as a lawyer when he won Brown versus Board of Education of Topeka. Amen. And it was on September the 2nd, 1967, that Marshall was sworn in as the nation's first African-American Supreme Court Justice. Yeah. During his 24-year tenure on the court, he staunchly supported the rights of all citizens creating a legacy that earned him the nickname, Mr. Civil Rights. <laughs> yeah, Thurgood Marshall accredited the name Mr. Civil Rights. But I wonder, does anybody remember Barack Obama? Yeah, Barack Hussein Obama was elected the 44th and the first African American as President of the United States of America. And in his 2008 Super Tuesday speech, he highlighted the importance of leadership in society. Mm. His campaign was driven by change, a departure from the status quo, and personal accountability. Mm. Ah, God, that's what we need right now. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, there are others, there are others that we want to remember during this time, and not just this month, but we need to know our history. Amen. I don't care what comes against you, against all hope, against all odds. If God be for you, who can be against you? Abraham's faith was accredited to him as righteousness. And yes, there are others. Hiram Rhodes revels. How you doing, John? Hiram Rhodes revels became the first African-American elected to the U.S. Senate and Congress as well in 1870. Y'all, we've been doing it for a while. To take his seat, which he rightfully won by an 81 to 15 vote in the Mississippi State Senate. Rebels had to battle racism and a challenge to his citizenship. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> and a challenge to his citizenship. As a senator, Rebels was an advocate of racial equality and appeasement. During his one-year term, he earned a reputation as a skilled orator and passionate civil rights champion. And yes, we don't want to forget about Richard, Richard Theodore Greener. Richard Theodore Greener, who was another first. He was the first African-American to graduate from Harvard University. He became the first black professor at a southern university, teaching philosophy at the University of South Carolina. He later earned his law degree from the same institution and was admitted to practice law in the South Carolina Supreme Court. Greener would go on to serve as a professor and dean of Howard Law School 
before serving as a diplomat in Russia. Throughout his career, he was noted as a gifted speaker and writer, particularly concerning the cause of racial equality. Amen. And certainly, my brothers and sisters, we're thankful for these who have already paved the way. Amen. Those in education, these civil leaders, civic leaders, and also there are those in the arts and entertainment field who have made their mark in history. William Grant Steele was a gifted musician and composer and was one of the first, there's another first, African-Americans to break into the American symphonic scene. His Afro-American symphony. Yeah. Did y'all know that? His Afro-American symphony was the first black composed piece of its kind to be performed by a leading orchestra and the New York City Opera's staging of Steele's Troubled Island. Yeah. It marked the first ever major company performance of an opera written by an African American. As a conductor, as well, Steele shattered barriers. Since his time, all fields of American music has opened up to and continue to be enriched by people of diverse cultures. Amen. And along with that, we're going to talk about Louis Armstrong, who learned to play the cornet and read music while at the Colored Wolf's Home for Boys. Armstrong became a trumpet virtuous and jazz pioneer, working with famous band leaders of the day. A superb showman and entertainer as well. He appeared in several popular films. His recording of Hello, Dolly earned him a Grammy Award for Best Male Vocal Performance in 1964. My, my, my. Lorraine Hansberry. Anybody know about Lorraine Hansberry? All right. Lorraine Hansberry was a gifted playwright who tragically died at the young age of 34 after a long battle with cancer. Her masterwork, A Raisin in the Sun, tells the story of an African-American family's life in the Washington Park sub subdivision of Chicago's Woodlawn neighborhood, a plot inspired by her own family's experiences. The play was the first written by an African-American woman to be produced on Broadway. Hansberry became the youngest playwright and the fifth woman to serve the New York Drama, to receive the New York Drama Critics Circle Award, the best play of the year. Amen. These people have paved the way for us. Amen. They've made their mark in history, even in spite of all that they had to endure. And I come to tell you this morning, my brothers and sisters, we too ought to keep on persevering. Don't let nothing stop you from allowing your faith to be accredited as righteousness. 
Amen. For the God that we serve is able to do all things. Don't let nobody or nothing keep you down. Be as bold as Abraham and believe in the impossible. For faith is necessary. You got to have faith to make it on this journey. For without faith, you cannot please God. I need somebody to know that we need faith. The righteous live by faith. And if we don't believe God, if we cannot believe what God say, we can't please God. Because you got to have the faith that know that God is who he said he is. He'll do what he said he would do. He'll make you what he wants you to be. Somebody say faith. Faith is necessary. Look at somebody and tell them the necessity of faith. It has to be in your heart. You got to know you can't do anything without God on your side. Can I get a witness? I'm so glad that I've learned how to trust in the Lord. I've learned how to believe God. I know God will. I come to tell you like the hymn writer said, my faith looks up to thee, thy lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me when I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy, holy thine. Can I get a witness? I want to go to verse 3. It says, while life's dark maze I tread, and griefs around me spread. Be thou my God. Be darkness turned to day. Wipe sorrow's tears away. Nor let me ever stray from thee aside. My faith looks up to thee. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied my every groan as long as I live and troubles rise for troubles will come as long as troubles come I'm gonna hasten to his throne I'm gonna run to the rock that's higher than I thank you Lord for what you're doing thank you Lord for the faith that is accredited and righteousness. Thank you, God. I may not be all that I should be, but thank God I still have faith for the word declares faith the size of a mustard seed. You can move mountains Thank you, Lord, for the faith you've given unto me. Thank you, God, for helping me to believe, to believe in your promise, to believe in your purpose, to believe in your power. Thank you, God, because with faith, your presence is with me, and I bless the Lord at all times. I lift up my hands and tell God, thank you for all you're doing. Thank you, Lord. I've got faith that everything going to be all right. It doesn't matter what's going on in this world. It doesn't matter to me 
who's in the White House uh, as long uh, as Jesus uh, is in my house, uh, as long uh, as I got Jesus, uh, I've got everything, uh, everything I need. Uh, the choir said, uh, God is uh, my all in all. Uh, he's everything I need. Uh, Thank you, Lord. I know that faith is a necessity. The Word of God declares we walk by faith and not by sight. You might not always see how God is going to open up the way, how God's going to fix it for you. But if you got faith, <laughs> you'll wait for God to manifest it for you. Can I get a witness? I thank God that I've learned down through my years, and I like to think that I'm really not that old, but I got some age on me. I can feel it. But, but I thank God that down through the years, and listen, everything that I've been through, the times I've had to cry, them times when I felt like I was all by myself, the times that I was rejected. The times that I was lied on. God worked it out for my good. It was because of those times those painful times, those disappointing times, those hard times. It was through those times that God made me. And I thank God for the faith that I have in him. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And listen, the word tells us, Romans, thank you God, thank you God. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus, believe that he is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But you've got to believe. You've got to have faith. And listen, it's His grace. Because none of us are deserving. As a matter of fact, even being saved, we are as filthy rags. But thank God for his cleansing blood. 
Hallelujah. He's cleansing us day by day. I thank God for faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning, if you don't believe him, if you haven't gotten to the place where you can believe God, listen, if you can't believe God, you're missing out on so much that God would want to do for you. You've got to believe that he can and he will. And you got to wait on him. You can't jump in and try to fix it on your own. Because you're just going to mess it up even worse. Bring more troubles on you, more heartache, more pain on yourself. But if you just trust God, God will do it for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you stand all over the sanctuary? For those of you that are joining us via Facebook, YouTube, or the church website, we thank God for your presence. And as we extend this invitation, listen, let me tell you all something. We are a royal priesthood. God loves us. Just like he loves everybody else. God loves us. Don't let nobody fool you. The color of your skin should not stop you from getting whatever God has for you. The only thing that can stop you is you. We have those who have already paved the way for us. We have them as examples. God loves us. <laughs> but today, as I extend this invitation, First of all, there may be somebody here that has not accepted Christ as their personal Savior. Have not believed God that he gave his son to die for you, for your unrighteousness. And listen, when Christ gave his life, when he laid his life down to die for us, One who knew not sin, but yet became sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Isn't that a wonderful thing? We can become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And if you don't know him, would you come today and say, I want to start my life with Christ in my heart. Hallelujah. If you don't know him, if you haven't accepted him, or perhaps you're in a place where you're even doubting where you are right now. Maybe you've given your life to Christ. But you're feeling like a failure. The enemy is telling you, you are not amount, you're not amounting to anything. You're not doing anything worthwhile. You're not worth anything. Listen, the devil is a lie. God didn't make no junk. And there may be somebody here. You're feeling like that. You're feeling like nobody cares for you. But I want to invite you to come that we might pray with you and pray for you. That you might have that confidence, that assurance that Jesus is yours and you are his. Hallelujah. And there may be someone that's just been going through some stuff. 
and you're waiting on God to move. Perhaps you just need someone to pray with you and pray for you. We're here, and we want to do just that. If you're standing in the need of prayer, would you come? Hallelujah. Would you come believe in God? Yes, yes, yes. Come and lay it at the altar. Lay your all on the altar before him. He desires that we cast all of our cares upon him. Because he cares for us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For every mountain, God. And we thank you, Lord, for every valley. Hallelujah, God. Anyone else that desires to come? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you may be seated. But we ask you to pray with us as we pray. As we go to God in faith. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now, God, just as we are. Realizing that you are a holy God. A righteous God a loving God, a forgiving God, realizing, Lord, that you are God Almighty. You have all power. And Lord, here we are, as humble as we know how. We come to you, Lord. Oh, God, casting our cares upon you. We thank you, Lord, for caring for us. And here we are, God, asking that you forgive us of all of our wrong. Every word, thought, and deed that we've done, Lord, forgive us. Those things, God, that wasn't pleasing unto you, forgive us. And Father, as we come, we realize, God, that you know all about us. Nothing, Lord, is hidden from you. You know our deepest and inner feelings, oh God. You know, God, the hurt and the pain. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're already aware, God, of the attacks of the enemy upon us, Lord. But God, just as you were there with Job, we believe, God, that you right here with us. Oh, God, in the midst of the devil's attacks, you're a God who is a protector. Thank you, Lord. You've already prepared a way of escape for us. And for that, God, we say thank you. Father, in your name, have your way in us, O oh God. O oh God, in your name, Father. Right now, God, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every circumstance and situation, every prayer request, Lord. We pray, God, that you would meet every need, Lord. In the name of Jesus, somebody right now, God, needs salvation, God. Somebody needs to know who you are, God. Somebody needs to know that you are the giver of life. Father, that you can give them joy in the midst of their sorrow. Somebody right now, God, needs a touch from you, Lord. Their body, Lord, racking with pain. 
sickness, God. Touch, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Financial problems, make a way for them, God. We believe you, Lord. We believe you, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father, for what you're doing right now. Oh, God, relationships, Lord. Have your way, oh, God. Men, the brokenhearted. Oh, God, we pray right now, God, that you would give those, Lord, who are going through emotional strain. Oh, God, mental health, Lord. They're having problems, God. We pray right now, God, that you would give them a sober mind. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have your way. We thank you, God, for loving us, Lord. We thank you, God, for blessing us, Lord. We thank you, God, for opening up doors, Lord. We thank you, God, for strengthening us, Lord. We thank you for power, Lord. In your name, Lord. In your name, Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and celebrate the victory. Hi, oh, God. Thank you. Come on and celebrate your victory right now. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 faith. God, we thank God for the word coming from our pastor this morning. Hallelujah. 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 As we continue in worshiping, we ask that you will prepare yourselves to give as unto the Lord. That's our word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. As our ushers come forth, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory to your name.
things come of thee. This is our, as we said, this is our last Sunday that we recognize for black history. And keeping the vision of our CED director, I don't think she has made it in today, but as our superintendent, Sister Patricia, Fall, Patricia Small will come and we're gonna ask Brother Lucas calling if he would help, come and help me as we are going to recognize someone for black history. Lucas is gonna help, help as we recognize uh, a little hard, tr we try not to, we like to surprise our, the person. And so this morning for black history, our last Sunday black history, we wanna recognize Brother Louis Cole Holland. If Brother Louis Coe Holland. <laughs> Amen. We'll give you a moment to get down. Hello. Oh. Praise his name. Praise his name. <laughs> Amen. Louis Coe R. Holland uh, is a 2007 graduate from Winston-Salem State University. Uh, and a native to Gastonia, North Carolina. From WSSU, he was awarded the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with honors and began his career at Wachovia Corporation and began his career, oh no. Since 2009, Louis Co. worked in, in the technology er, area, arena, with various companies and the most recently transformed the role of Network Operations Manager for Fortune 500 company, Duke Energy. Outside of Duke Energy and Alpha, Louis Coe is active in the community in which he lives. As a recent recipient of the Activist of the Year Award by Gastonia, Gaston County Organization of Community Concerns in 2020. He currently serves as a scout leader for the Cub Scout Pack 1906 in the Piedmont Council of Boy Scouts of America, serving as an advocate of the arts, its impact on a holistic education. Louis Coe is a former board member of the Little Theater of Gastonia, a longtime football coach in Gastonia and Cleveland counties. He's most recent provided fundamental football instruction at Shelby Middle School, Middle School in 2021. Louis Coe is a member of the Ada, Ada Mu Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Incorporated, where some of his previous leadership roles include committee chair Vice President, well, Chapter Vice President, Chapter President, and most notably, uh, oh yeah, Chapter President 2017 to 2020. He currently serves as the District Director of Area 5 in North Carolina District. Technology is a passion for Louis Co., and he leverages that passion in service of his fraternity. Louis Co. serves as Technology Director for the Southern Region and Education Consortium of North Carolina. Louis Coe is a proud husband of Janae Bulware Holland and proud father of Lucas and Larry Holland. And that's it.
think it's ironic that you say speech, because um, I, was, I was joking with Ms. Neal last week. We were out in the, in the foyer, I said, so who do you got to pay to get on this table? And uh, <laughs> little did I know, uh, you know, plans were already being made. Uh, but I'm absolutely thankful. Uh, technology is a passion. I use technology to solve problems and create opportunities. Uh, thank you to my family, church family, uh, Family Universal for this honor and uh, opportunity uh, to give a few remarks. Uh, I'm between you and the benediction, so I'm going to be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. And we know those two that stood there with you are very proud of you. Amen. And we are too. We thank you and we pray God's blessings upon you. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, there is no way I can lead this place or let us go without hearing from the Reverend Stelly James Jackson. <laughs> oh, it's such a blessing to have you in the house with us. Amen. Test it. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. And yes, sir. Thank you. Greetings to the church. And I am just so blessed to have this opportunity to speak to you and to see you and to worship with you, even though I worship with you uh, on my phone every Sunday morning. I go to <laughs> Sunday school every Sunday morning. Yes, yes. Even though I'm not with you uh, to, in person, but certainly I enjoy the fellowship I'm so glad to be able to see you, those who I, I'm unable to see uh, because you're in the back part of the sanctuary, but to hear the choir and hear the pastor and the musician and all of the other things that go on, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to share with you and see you this morning. Mary uh, was doing the same thing with me, but unfortunately, uh, you know, we ask the Lord to prolong our lives. Yes. But when you have a long life, it brings issues. And both of us have issues. But still, as the pastor said this morning, we're still above ground. Yes, yes. And I am so thankful to have my son with me who has come home and my uh, other daughter uh, that, that you don't see regularly, uh, Sherry. Sherry's home. So they, they divided up the pie today. <laughs> I don't know what part I am. <laughs> But Jimmy came with me, and Sherry went with Diana. All right. And so we are together. We, they worshiped in Clover, and we're worshiping here in Gastonia. And it's just a pleasure to be here to hear the, the choir and to share with you. Yes. And to hear the good sermon this morning as she charged our hearts letting us know if you have faith nothing can stop you All right. All right. and so without faith you know you can't even please god That's right. without That's right. faith you can't go to heaven either Amen. and so i am so glad to be able to be here today and to share with you and one other thing i'm so thankful of that my mother said I was born February 26, 1932. Uh -huh. But my birth certificate say I was born February 25th, All right. 1932. So I share 
two birthdays. <laughs> but, but, let me, but let me say this. I believe that February 26th is the correct birthday because I believe my mother was there when I was born. All right. <laughs> Amen. Really, though, you just don't know how good it is to be in the fellowship. I cannot understand how people can go to work and go to the football game go all these other places. But you can't spend two hours at the church. All of our help comes from the Lord. And until, you know, we talk about Trump, how bad he is, and what he's going to do. You haven't seen anything yet if he gets back in. And I'm saying to you that we ought to come together in corporate worship, giving God the praise and the thanksgiving for the things that he has done and what he will do and what he is going to do if we will allow him by faith. And I want to say to the young people who are here today, would you please, would you please be obedient do the things that you're supposed to do and praise the Lord and pay attention to your parents that you may become successful. And you've heard about all of these people who have, by faith, they were able to do yes. those things. My faith looks up to thee Thy Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine, now hear me while I pray. Take all my sins away. Amen. Thank the Lord. Reverend Doctor, he will be 92 years old tomorrow. 92. 92. And it's a blessing that he's able, and still in his right mind, and able to come. I know he's not 100%, but he's still 99 and a half. <laughs> and I'd like for us to sing happy birthday to him today. Sis, since they said it was, you can yeah. do it. Now, you know I wasn't going to gonna let that go without okay. doing that. All right, doctor. All right, man. Yes, ma'am. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. bless you with many more. Praise God. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. I, I still glean from his wisdom. Amen. I was certainly blessed to have presiding elder, former presiding elder Jackson as one of my presiding elders, leaders, mentors. He has certainly blessed me down through the years. Amen. And I want him to know that. I, I tell him that. Uh, Reverend Kirkland and I talk about it a lot. Because we really do appreciate Reverend Stanley Jackson Amen. as our presiding elder. Amen. God bless you all. We're we, we going to go home today. <laughs> God being our helper. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Just remember Wednesday, the uh, Lenten luncheon, the community Lenten luncheon service, Wednesday at 12 noon. Amen. Amen. Let us stand as we rejoice, as we prepare to be dismissed. We thank God for all of you that have come to share with us today. Believe me, we thank you from the very depths of our hearts. It's a blessing to have you with us. Abraham's faith was credited to him as righteousness. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or think, according to the power that... with us. Please share today's message with someone in need. See you next week. Be blessed.